Hello and welcome to the GCSE Physics tutorial for topic P1 Energy. This tutorial is part 3 Energy Demands. We're looking at energy resources and energy demands. First of all you need to know the difference between the terms renewable and non-renewable. So renewable energy includes coal, oil and gas, so fossil fuels, and nuclear fuel. And they're all finite which means they will eventually run out and these can only be used once. The main concern is they produce a lot of pollution. When you burn fossil fuels, you make carbon dioxide, which is a greenhouse gas. They also can produce sulfur dioxide, which causes acid rain. Other environmental concerns are things like mining, oil spillages and nuclear waste. However, renewable energy does provide a lot of energy. Non-renewable includes solar, wind, tidal, hydroelectric, waves, biofuel and geothermal. These will not run out and they don't produce pollution, but the main concern is they don't make as much energy and they can be unreliable. So we're going to talk through each one. The pie chart here shows you the consumption in 2014 of different types of energy. So these are the main different types of energy that we need to know about. We're going to be looking at the renewable energy resources. First of all, solar. So solar cells or panels, they actually convert light directly into electricity. The good thing is there's no pollution, so there's no carbon dioxide being produced, and they're reliable in the daytime, and they have low running costs, and we can set up in remote areas like deserts. However, they are expensive to actually build, and are limited to being used in the daytime, and if, for example, you suddenly need more electricity, they can't add um, to the demand. So if, you, if there's demand of it, you can't suddenly make more electricity. Wind turbines. They have a turbine at the back of them which turns a generator and makes electricity. The good thing, again, no pollution, r low running costs because the fuel is wind, and doesn't permanently damage the environment. So once they come down, they, they haven't damaged anything permanently. The issues are people live near them, don't like the noise and the visual look of them. They're unreliable, so you have to depend on the wind. Um, sometimes it can be too windy. Um, they cannot produce more electricity if demand increases, and they're expensive to build. Wave turbines, they are found along the coast in the sea, and they turn a turbine, which then will turn a generator in the land to make electricity. Again, no pollution, low running costs, and can be used in coastal areas and islands. However, there is damage to the environment and marine life. Um, there has to be placed clear of boat ships, uh, routes, so that can be a concern. Unreliable because there isn't always waves. Waves are linked to the wind. They're expensive to make and they don't produce a lot of energy compared to some of the others. Tidal. These are called tidal barrages and they're built across a river estuary. Uh, where a turbine then turns when the tide comes in and that turns the generator and makes electricity. The good thing is there's no pollution again. They're reliable. It's not, t tides are not caused by the wind. Tides are caused by the pull of the moon's gravity. So a tide will always come in and out every day. They're quite low running costs and produce more energy than wave. The concern is visual pollution, damage to the environment, expensive, and there's limited areas where you can actually build tidal barrages. Hydroelectric, that involves a large reservoir and a dam. The water moves through the dam and then turns a turbine, which turns a generator, which makes electricity. Again, no pollution, but this can produce electricity on demand. So you can store the water and then when you need electricity, let it move through the dam fall and, and create electricity. It's reliable as long as there's water and so can't really be used in countries where there's drought and can produce electricity to rem remote areas. The concerns are it can just destroy your habitats and the environment making these. You need a large area of space to build it and it is expensive to make in the first place. Geothermal. This is made by passing water over hot rocks which are near the surface of the earth. This then makes steam which then turns a turbine that then turns a generator to make electricity. The good thing again is no pollution and it can be used to make electricity and heat buildings. However, not everywhere in the world has these hot rocks. So countries like Iceland use geothermal energy because they do have hot rocks. 
underneath the ground, other places like New Zealand or areas of Japan. But countries like the UK, we don't have this. And also it's expensive to build the geothermal power stations. Finally, biofuels. Biofuels are the only renewable fuel where something is burnt. And this is made from plants and animal waste. They're burnt to make heat, which then boils water, which makes steam. The steam turns to turbine, turns to generator, makes electricity. Now, even though you're burning these things and making carbon dioxide, because you can then regrow plants, which then take in carbon dioxide, it doesn't add any more carbon dioxide to the environment. So we say it is carbon neutral. They're also reliable because you'll, as long as you can grow plants and have animal waste. However, they're expensive to produce and manufacture because you have to really refine these fuels. It causes huge habitat loss and deforestation of area and land and wildlife. So at the start of the 20th century, there's more and more people, the population increased, and also the Industrial Revolution, the UK was using more and more fossil fuels. But in the 21st century, the UK has recognised that we need to conserve those fossil fuels and start using more renewable fuels. The reason is because fossil fuels are running out, fossil fuels cause more pollution, and also other countries are starting to work together to try and reduce the amount of fossil fuels that are being burnt. However, the issues still remain that renewable fuels are unreliable, they're not always going to be able to be used, for example, wind turbines. They don't produce as much energy as fossil fuels. They're expensive to make, which is going to be a concern in some countries which do not have a strong economy. So it's about trying to educate, but also have less fossil fuels and more renewable, a balance between the two to make sure that a country is contributing less to global warming, but is also making enough energy for the population. You pause the tutorial now and try this six mark question. Okay, so it's a compare two types of renewable fuels. So first of all, say they're both renewable fuels and what that means. And then just talk about each one. So a hydroelectric is when the reservoir is flooded and then the water moves through a dam and which the water turns a turbine and makes electricity. With biofuels, you're burning animal waste or plants to make steam, which turns turbine which turns generator to make electricity. They're both expensive to build, but then the actual fuel itself is cheap because it's just animal waste, plants and water. Hydroelectric makes no carbon dioxide, but biofuels do, but then plants can actually take in carbon dioxide when they're, being gr when they're grown during photosynthesis, so they're carbon neutral. By building these power stations, it can damage the environment and cause loss of species, but they also are reliable fuels, but they don't produce large amounts of energy. So that's just some, some comparisons you could make of each one. In summary, we've looked at energy resources and energy demands.